Good evening once again. It's Friday evening and it's time for Hold No Bars. Let me just take the TV down. Thank you. Right. Good evening. Hold No Bars tonight. We're back with you once again. It's Friday. It's the weekend before another long holiday weekend on Monday. Uh, the Muslim community and Guyana as a whole will observe Eid al-Adha. So Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak to everyone. This is the sacrifice. Well, the phones are going already. Hi, good evening. We haven't even started yet. Go ahead. You're on the air. Okay. So, yes, the first call seemed to have been a crank call. So we hold no bars tonight. We're monitoring the issue of elections and the engagement between the key players in our society. And in particular, hi, good evening. You're on the air already. What do you have to contribute? Hello? Okay, yes, same person got through. So we're monitoring elections and the play between and among the various persons who have to move democracy forward in Guyana. Everyone was keenly looking at this engagement between His Excellency Brigadier General, the President of the country, David Granger, and GCOM the commissioners of the Guyana Elections Commission. And that engagement happened, I think it was yesterday. And at least we were hoping to hear some, or be given some indication, if not hear some definitive word about elections. But I understand the president shared out booklets, three booklets in particular. And if I can pull those up once again, and talk a bit about them. Let me just pull them up here again. Yes, uh, three booklets were handed out and um, they dealt with the way forward for elections in Guyana. They went with, they also dealt with the issue of the consequential orders and um, they dealt also with uh, Wentzford, you know, and as far as I hear about the interaction of at uh, that meeting, right, I'm just pulling this up a bit. Um, yes, let me just get these pictures. But three booklets were given out. One was named The Way Forward, and it was authored by His Excellency. Brigadier General David Granger, our president. And um, there was another one about consequential orders. But that basically was the conversation, the engagement between the president and the Elections Commission. So we want to know what is really happening. Are our leaders serious about giving the people what they want? That is, elections as described in our constitution as was also confirmed by the judicial system locally and all the way to the Caribbean court. So let's, let's deal with this. But, and, and for me, and for me, the onus is on His Excellency the President Brigadier General David Granger. The onus is on him. He has the everything in his hands. So we're told we have to wait on the Chief Justice to hear her pronouncement on the House House registration. And then we are also um, listening to what the President is saying. Some are interpreting his words or his attitude or his signals as he will probably take the issue of house to house registration all the way to the carbon court of justice but even if he does that 
that does not prevent the fact that the Constitution says you must have an elections within three months. As I said earlier, three months expired on the 21st of March. With the CCJ, it has been generally accepted that three months will expire on September the 18th. So regardless of both house to house, you are still mandated to call in elections before the 18th of September. And GCOP is duty bound to be ready for an elections. But before I start taking the cause and all the lines are going, right? I want to emphasize a particular point which I had um, to raise again with one of our leading attorneys, especially one of the leading attorneys who represent the leader of the opposition and those challenging the the governments, the administration, the coalition government on this issue of interpretation of house-to-house -house registration. We are hearing about the list, list, the voters list, and President Granger is saying he has to go to an election with a credible voters list. There are two lists. I accept, like most people out there, that the list we're talking about that expired on April 30th, 2019, that list is the voters list. What is called the official list of electors or the final list of electors. That expired on the 30th of April. What doesn't expire is the National Register of Registrants. That does not expire. That is updated, and that is updated by a process called continuous registration. So this National Register of Registrants that exists as the database from which we get our ID cards and from which a voters list is extracted, that does not expire, but it becomes updated via continuous registration. The voters list, when you extract from that National Register of Registrants a preliminary list of electors, then that preliminary list of electors that is sanctified, that is amended by a claims and objections period. And after that claims and objections period, you get this official list, All right? So we have to be clear. And today I was speaking with a gentleman from Belgium, and he said, well, we have to get the list expired. So the only way to get a new list is house to house registration. And so the con he says the confusion is there. But what he said to me is that, look, you know, it's sad, but he, I'm 67 and I have to go through all. And he's talking about the sincerity of the political leaders with respect to honoring principle. So, and then he left me with the words that um, when the politician is looking for your vote, he shakes your hands. And after he gets the vote, he shakes your confidence. So that's one f I'm sharing with you, it's not mine. It's not original, but I got that one today. He says, um, there's a popular saying, when a politician wants your vote, he shakes your hands. When he gets into government, he shakes your confidence. And that aptly describes um, what we have currently. 
I have had three persons who have WhatsApp me, and um, they ask if I can raise their issues because they try getting through, and um, they they prefer to do this. One says, "Good night, Mr. Nadir. This is a matter of urgency, and our GCOM chair is behaving like it's not of the essence." This list situation is just a way of buying time for the government. These people heads, okay? So that's one. The other person says, good night, Mr. Nade. Keep up the good work. Lowenfield said the present list is good enough, right? And um, the other one, I'm just pulling that one up now. Okay, I have quite a few more, but let me, um, Okay, I have a few more. Let me go to the lights. Okay. So we have a few more, but they are quite a bit. Hi, good evening. Turn down the TV a bit. Thank you. Okay. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. Yeah, good night. Good evening. I think this government is, is a real government. They need to push in the seat with a, with a boot with a puzzle. Thank you. Okay. So um, we understand what we could do with bad governments and so, but we could be a bit more because you could share your knowledge, you can share your conclusions based on the principles you applied. So let us keep it along that line, right? And um, we're going to have a really, really good program if you so do. Good. And we do have quite a few um, callers who have become a bit threatening. So, um, right? And so we are making note of them and we will see how things progress from there. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Hold no bars. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. Okay, we're getting quite a few. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good night, Mr. Nadir. Good evening. Um, it's really so bad on the news tonight. I don't. I didn't see. They, they are talking about on the news about our um, attorney general, uh -huh. and they and they made that uh, this um, force war that they put uh, um, uh, what do you call the word again? I forget what, what kind of government we having. Um, this force war. Uh, okay, so, don't use don't use curse word. No, not curse. First, F I R S T. Oh, first. Uh huh. Yes. Um, not a word in the other word. Um. Caretaker. Yes. Mm. And there, it, it read on the news over caretaker. Um, attorney general. Mm -hmm. So so bad as a guy in this. Next thing, I, I as a citizen of this country, mm -hmm. I don't believe that so much people that they see done registered already. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of my relatives, as I reach some of them this afternoon by the market, they went away, them tell me they don't register. Okay. The other body say they don't register. So how do you get so to be no more done register already, Mr. Marriott? Okay, well, let's see. I don't know, but um, that's what they're saying. And I just, no, want, I, I, I just want to add that, you know, it's easy to capture the first 50,000, the first 100,000. But as you go down, it becomes harder and harder to capture everyone that's eligible. And this is the issue for me. Outside of the fact that it's illegal, you just can't do it and have elections within the constitutional deadline. Let's take a few more calls. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Okay. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Yes, good. Good evening. Oh, and just one second. Let me just um. You 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 you're hearing? Yes. So you have an election, right? You uh -huh. need a clean list, a good list. And from day one, uh, the president of this country asks for a social registration. What's so hard about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what's so hard about it if you want me to answer. But if you feel, yeah, yeah, I'm not listening to you, Fiat. Okay. Well, you can have a clean list. You can have a good list, a credible list, 
once you extract from the National Register of Registrants. This house-to-house -house registration is not going to give you a voter's list. It first gives you a list of citizens who are 14 years and older, which we already have. And it's from that list that you extract the first, what they call preliminary list of electors. So this is not an exercise to give you the preliminary list. If you want a preliminary list of electors, you can extract that immediately from the existing National Register of Registrants. And then you open up a period of continuous registrations for six weeks to allow persons who have returned home, who have become 18 year, 14 years of age to register. Persons who would have married, persons who would have changed address. So that period gives you an opportunity, right, to clean up the voters list that is extracted from this national register. So people are missing the point, right? <laughs> are listening now? Uh huh. Well, you ask me if I don't think. Absolutely not. Because once the no-confidence vote was passed, anybody who loves democracy and who want, the, who want their citizens to live in a democratic and free society would immediately have called in the Elections Commission and said, I'm thinking of a date in five to six or eight weeks or ten weeks. Please prepare for elections. But you cannot go to You can. <laughs> you, you can. Well, two rounds don't make a right, I've said over and over yeah, again. And, and if but we have, if, the, yeah, oh, so this, the people of this country, the people of this country deserve better, right? As I said on one program, you know, this is the third time I'm going through this. Could you imagine the kind of confidence our young people, our young professionals, the people with talent who could stay here and really make this a paradise? Disgusted with all of us. And thanks a lot for your comments, right? Yeah, thanks. And this is the kind of exchanges we have. We can listen to each other, respect each other's views. We may not agree, but respect. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good night, Mr. Anso. Good evening. I could dress up tonight. No, man. I just put on a different, a different <laughs> shoe. I came up right? Right? Yes. Uh, when the GCOM produce a list, right? does the two party have a right to decide if that list is credible or GCOM is the sole authority for pre 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 presenting that list? Okay, GCOM is the sole authority for preparing electoral lists. What right does the two parties have to question GCOM authority? If GCOM is the sole authority, what power do they have? Okay. But it means that they're questioning GCOM's competence. No, not. I think there are some subtleties. GCOM, right, mm -hmm. the commissioners, the 331, okay. that seven makes it. In the interest of consensus and confidence, any chairman of the Elections Commission will try to reach consensus on how we're going to conduct our work. And listen to this, uh -huh. within the laws. Okay, listen to me. So how come could only one section of this, this commission be uh, uh, advocating for a credible list? What happened to the other section of the Commissioners, they can request a credible list also. Okay, we are requesting a credible list. We are but if you go down that line, when is it going to down? Look okay. because a, a credible list mm -hmm. to me means a convincing list. Mm -hmm. So when is it are you going to convince mm -hmm. because or to be convinced that this list is credible? Mm -hmm. You okay. see, it's, it's, it's a sliding bar. They could always find some fault. 
along the line. Yeah. Uh, let me just read this thing, right? What this government is asking for is a winning list, not a credible list. Mm -hmm. But GCOM mandate is to provide a voters list. Mm -hmm. Right? GCOM can't be as got a slide in to, to convince nobody of the list. They mm -hmm. have a mandate of presenting a list, right. a voters list, right? Mm -hmm. So what if the kid what is a criteria for formulating a credible or a convincing list? Mm -hmm. And should not both parties have the same privilege mm -hmm. of determining and demanding a credible list of their own choice? Mm -hmm. And so to demand GCOM to provide a list of your own liking mm -hmm. is to usurp GCOM's mandate and to undermine and cast doubt on GCOM's ability to be competent and non-partisan. Non uh, let's see now, right? Alicit produce. Mm -hmm. How could you determine if it is a credible list? Mm -hmm. And at what point in time, right, mm -hmm. will that determination be made? If the list could be convincing before the election, before the call election, mm -hmm. could you you could say, well, here this is a convincing list, right? Right. Right. Follow me. Will Let's you go. accept mm -hmm. the results? Mm -hmm. If you claim this list before the election is called. Mm -hmm. that this is a, a credible list. Will you accept the results when when, when it is finished? Mm -hmm. And if the determination has to be made after the election, mm -hmm. right? There could be manipulation in your sincerity because if you win, you could say the list is credible. And if you lose, mm -hmm. you could say the list is not credible. Mm -hmm. So the latter part is a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know, this, this, this credible is a fiction. Mm -hmm. It's not something. Uh, it's not something consistent. Mm -hmm. You understand? I wish you. I wish you. This credible GCOM has a mandate, and they have to provide a list. I can't fault you at all. GCOM has a mandate to provide a list, and if you're going to go to go down that line, this part, these two party want a credible list, and the opposition party want a credible list. Mm -hmm. So basically, you see GCOM being there if you can't, if they, if you don't trust them. Mm -hmm. They have a mandate. To do, leave them to do the mandate. Jacob can't convince nobody that that list is credible. If you go down the line and never have elections, you have to leave Jacob to do do the work mm -hmm. and have uh, some some faith in the competence. All right, thanks a lot. Great, I can't fault your logic, your logic again, right? But thanks, thanks for your comments. Um, I was mentioning. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good night, Mr. Nadir. Good evening, good evening. How are you today, man? Not too bad today, quite well. Okay, um, first I was uh, asked, I want to ask one question. Sure. Um, the opposition leader submitted a list to the president, included Mr. Alex, uh, Vincent Alexander for the GCOM report. Mm -hmm. Including Vincent Alexander? I don't think so. He was not on the list? No, I don't think Vincent was on the list. Okay, okay. Um, for I the, the new chairperson that's sitting there presently now, mm -hmm. I think she says that she will work with the constitution. But um, the constitution says election should be held within ninety days. Three months, yeah. Three months. But we didn't hear the decom chairperson come up with anything yet and say that well election should be at that time because the president claiming that he had a get he got to hear from GCOM, GCOM mm -hmm. and GCOM claiming that they got to hear from the president. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you're playing at Nabab mm -hmm. So I don't think, and the more long the president takes for all the election, uh -huh. the people are getting to hate him more. Ouch. That's a hard one, boy. But it's yeah, a reality, yeah? People, every day you turn on the TV, it's just election and no comfy emotion. People get to hate the government more. So he, if he is so confident that he loves the people mm -hmm. of this country, and he loves everything that what he is doing in this country and everything is right, go to election. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and let me see who loves who. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, good evening. You're on the... Hi, you, you're on the air. I don't know why the ringer is on on this phone. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Let us something called the law and something called reality. Thank you. The reality is it's impossible for elections to be within the next month. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with me? 
No, I don't agree with you. <laughs> it's impossible. Mm -hmm. They got a period called claims and objection. Right. That is the only story. You list, people got to go and see the name is on the list. Right. And that is not practical within a month. Mm -hmm. So what you preach to the guy needs people that take much by the 18th. Mm -hmm. You talk, you talk. I'm just trying to get this ringer off so that it doesn't disturb you. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's my point. Now, um, as you got the last caller, yes. saying that how we can learn to pay for this. It's important that you mention to him that once the list is done, mm -hmm. it's the right of every citizen mm -hmm. who is eligible to vote. Mm -hmm. Go and make sure the name is on the list. Mm -hmm. What they call the claims and objection period. Mm -hmm. So that's my contribution. Okay. The only challenge I have to the last caller's contribution is that, let's say the claims and objections, sorry, not the new registration process produces a list. And that list has only 150,000 people. You'll have 450,000 more people in the space of 10 days fighting to get their names rectified on the list. And so you have a bigger problem. Right. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Good go ahead. Go, go ahead. I was listening to a program Tuesday night with Mr. Peter Ramsey. Yes. When he was saying that um, this government disobeyed the Constitution and this and that, and just the day before or the same day, mm -hmm. um, America put on a complete embargo on Venezuela's side, not can left. And they will do the same thing to us if we continue flouting with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I was listening with Blister yesterday and in and the bro up in the situation room. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you listen it. No, I didn't have the luxury of listening to Wolf. Uh -huh. You know what they said? Trump, America would have said the land of the British and the land of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Is disobeying the Constitution of America too? Mm -hmm. That was said in the yesterday program. Mm -hmm. And as I say, you know, Mr. Nadi, mm -hmm. when we look at this election and certain things that is going on, mm -hmm. I spoke to you before concerning the two races getting together. Mm -hmm. And you rightly said in our lifetime it can happen. Mm -hmm. When you hear some slogan or some racist remark that is being used in this program, mm -hmm. you could see blatant hate rage. Mm -hmm between the Indian people, coming from the Indian people. And it's not good for our country. We mm -hmm. won't get no way. And we got so much island, how much thing we get, mm -hmm. this hatred can't do. Mm -hmm. It can't do. And you know that we can't do. Mm -hmm. We can't get no way. In the, if, if we can't come together, as I believe in Sanade, let me forget about the 2028. Our government make mistakes. Let us look forward. Tell the people what we can do for correct the ideal, what we sign, mm -hmm. what we can do for the future, for make the country a better place, mm -hmm. what we can do in preparing the city defense, what we can do in trying for poor crime. Let me talk these things, so let me talk what, what this body do in the past. We don't want here, though. we want to hear what we can be able to do for the future, for make this place a better place for all kinds of and Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, lines are open again. At the beginning of the program, I was referring to the meeting between the president and the commissioners at Chico. And what was presented was um, were three booklets. The Way Forward by David A. Granger. The second one was a booklet on consequential orders. I guess this is the government interpretation of the consequential orders of the Cardinal Court of Justice. And the next booklet was a booklet entitled Credible Elections, the Political Situation in Guyana, David Granger. And that was the exchange. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Mr. Dear. Good evening. Um, all this stuff going on about the list. Mm -hmm. The Constitution says, GCOM must be in readiness for election at all times. Mm -hmm. Is every anybody? It seems everybody is forgetting that. Mm -hmm. 
Lowenfield and Alexander mm -hmm. should repay the salary that salary that they've they've been paid since January. Uh huh. But Mr. Alexander is not a full-time employee of the Secretary at GCOM. He is oh. a commissioner, and it's not oh. a full-time job, right? Okay. okay. But what are they being paid for? I think I you mean, made this point before, and I want to totally agree with you because we must always have a, a list of electors that is live. The okay. list must always be live. Why? When we move to local government elections with constituencies, it means that at any point in time, a councillor mm -hmm. can no longer be there for whatever reason. Resignation, death, sickness, migration, right? Okay. So in order to fill one of these constituency uh, seats if there is no longer councillor represent you have to have an election and so with the local government elections comprising constituencies you always have to have a list that is official that is live that you can go to elections with right okay and law and field knows that he admitted and that the list they have can be fixed within whatever time. Well, they say one time he's speaking from this side of the moat, one time he's speaking from <laughs> this side, one time from the <laughs> upper lip here, lower lip there. And <laughs> On another note. So, Loy feeling got no credibility. I, kn I know how a person with no credibility can have a credible elections. And he ain't, ain't, ain't got no shame. The whole GCOM system needs to revamp. It's not a matter of revamp. We got to revamp people's mind, man. People got to learn to accept that, you know, this is my job. I must do it professionally. I must do it without fear or favor. This is the oath we take, you know. But go ahead. Conclude what you want to say so I can take a few more. society, that's a hard thing to do the way I've been seeing. Mm -hmm. On another note, everybody is saying that the buses are heading to let them. We were coming back from Barbies Monday afternoon. Right. We had to make way. There were more than 10 buses mm -hmm. escorted by the soldiers, I guess, mm -hmm. heading up Barbies just after my Coney Day passed us. Mm -hmm. It was very concerning. It's well, like everyone was asking, what's happening? What's happening? The police escorting buses. Not the police, soldiers. Soldiers escorting yes. buses. Yeah, no, no, no. They were escorting these buses. The buses everyone is talking about, the tinted buses full of people. Uh -huh. There were more than 10 of them heading up to Burby. Okay, these were some nice long coaster buses. I think it's called a Higa bus. H I G E R, right? I didn't notice that. But they're creamish? Was... They're creamish? Yes. Okay, those buses are <laughs> gifts from the people of China. To Guyana. Our government chose to give all 25 or 30 of these buses to the army. Right? Uh -huh. so, so, yes. It, it's and not the Haitian buses. No. Okay. If it's the same buses we're talking about, right? Okay. And, and So these 25 buses, they're moved, they are used to transport. <coughs> uh, sometimes we have conferences, they're used for delegates, but these buses are property properties of the army and many times they might be transporting soldiers okay but right. i don't know if they're it's like it seems somebody was preparing for war that's what that, that's what caused my mind <coughs> but it's good at least some of our soldiers are moving in comfort <laughs> thank you, you have a good night you too hi good evening you're on the air good evening, you, Mr. Nadir. Good evening. Hello. yes you're on i'm just turning down good the evening room. to you good evening what has happened i'm trying to find out are you in the campaign move for another party or you're going to campaign for the ppp party undoubtedly i'm on the pppc campaign okay they have accepted you there i have a choice right and they um mr jagdio <coughs> has said he has a big tent and there's space for everyone so you can come too Okay, what have happened? I, I hope they don't 
make that mistake of taking excess baggage. Okay, I might be excess baggage, so. Yes, I, you are, because I can remember you were the Ministry of Tourism, and yeah. then I was standing one time, and a person was asking about chicken license, and you said, let that chicken rot on the wall. That was very inhumane for you to talk to somebody like that. Uh, absolutely untrue. That's an absolute lie you're saying. Never made a comment like that. Yeah. Thank you. Right? Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. Okay, all the lines are clear. So, that person is... Uh, all right. Hi, good evening. You're on the good, good evening. You're on the air. Um, I like your view on this thing. I want you to give me... I want you to give me your view. Tell me. Do, do our source registration is a must or it isn't supposed to happen? And another thing. I have two... I have two voters ID card. One was issued in 1996. Mm -hmm. And the other one was issued in 1999. There's two time registration in less than three years. And under the National Registration Act, it's every 10 years supposed to be registered, right? No, no, that, there's nothing like that in the Act. What does the Act say? Right. Then you must be registered. Okay, but you finish what you're saying and then I'll. Uh, you Good, right? And um, mm -hmm. how come that when the PPP went to power, they mm -hmm. could be registered in 96 and 97, mm -hmm. and now they don't want registration now because mm -hmm. they know that if they get registration now, it can be a advantage for them because they supporters in rich age yet for register. Mm -hmm. And the, the APNO and PNC supporters rich age to register, so they don't want the registration because they're going to be an advantage for them. They want to wait till they get in, if they could get in, and which they can get in, mm -hmm. so that they could call the registration. Right. So it can be, they know that. The same no way, but mm -hmm. I think how social registration is a must because here why now. It's mm -hmm. voter's race expires since April. Mm -hmm. And if something expired in me, I can't use it. So I mean, if you're telling me that the list expires and they must use it, mm -hmm. therefore you're telling me I could go to the shop and buy a tin of milk that is expired and cleanse it and drink it. <laughs> which is not good. Thank you very much. Okay. I, um, I want to say to that caller, uh, might be your views, but my view is that uh, you did. Uh, signal some amount of lacking of information. You don't need a house-to-house -house registration, I repeat, to get a voter's list. There is an existing live legal list of register of citizens of Guyana 14 years and over from which is extracted a voter's list. He mentioned the issue of 1996 and 1999. Between those periods, we had a lot of discussion. I was there personally, and we had introduced a voter's ID card, which Justice Clutter Singh said was illegal, and she vitiated those elections. And then we had another set of ID cards. So we've had officially three sets of ID cards ever in this country, right? Two are still legal, the last two. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. You're, you're on. Yeah, Mr. Nadi, good evening. Load on a little bit for me, please. Good, gotcha. One minute, one minute. Sure. I, I just called to correct one of the callers before with his buses that she's talking about. Right. Um, she's not going down the right road. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she's misinformed. Mm -hmm. I think some information is in these newspapers. Mm -hmm. There's an exercise going on conducted mm -hmm. by the Ghana Defense Force. Mm -hmm. And by all rights, mm -hmm. I think that the GDF or the Ghana Defense Force is a mutual environment, mm -hmm. it's a mutual entity. Mm -hmm. And we should not at no time entertain. Mm -hmm. The kind of conversation she wanted to get about war and, and these sort of stuff. These soldiers are presently on exercise mm -hmm. and then um, let her have the papers as our guide. Well, I. You heard my response to her? Yes, I listened to her. This okay. is her response. Okay, good. But, um, so this so is part I, of my, my responsibility, my duty. If I know better and differently, and correctly, I have an obligation to impart that to people, which I did. And I think in the, at the end, she did accept that she thought it was some Haitians or something, 
Right? You could, you could imagine that that kind of information she would have been peddling otherwise. Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay, thank you. And thanks for calling yeah. through. Okay, so we are cleared now at all the lines. Hi, hi, good evening. You're on the air. I'd like to know who's the big rush for this government that everybody wants this government out. It's because the jobs can't go out anymore. Make everybody come with this no, no absolutely not. It's because a vote of no confidence was legally passed yeah, in the no, no, Constitution, no. and the Constitution says that you must have elections. That's the rush. That's the urgency. Right? Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I think like you don't really understand. Okay, I'm, I'm lowering the ring on this phone. Go ahead. Yeah, like you don't really understand. Let me say now that election was held mm -hmm. in the last couple of years back. Do we know how much people that say outdoors were as rich as my father we ever? Do we know how much people passed away? Do we know how much people ready to vote? Yes, yes. So that's the point the people them have to look at, and that's what Granger is saying. Mm -hmm. There's people that now coming up with that 18 years old ready to vote, but these ignorant people are not seeing. Okay, let me share some information with you because you seem to don't have all of the facts, right? right. You don't need house-to-house -house registration to add a person who was not registered during a previous continuous registration. We have had 10, 11 continuous registration exercises. Every six months we have one of these to give persons who become 14 years of age a chance to get onto what is called the National Register of Registrants, right? And that has been going on for the past five, six years. So to say that, we uh, need to give people a chance. That chance has been periodic, very periodic, right? Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I need you to investigate Calabar Security Services. Mm -hmm. They have the Asian working with them. Okay, I can't. Um, the issue is, it's going to be difficult for you to call a company without showing me some hard evidence. If I allow a person to call a company's name and make a whole lot of claims about the company and it's not accurate, we're damaging the reputation of a company. So you can say that I know of a security company and I can give you the information offhand. I work with them and in my shift there are 15 persons who don't speak English and I'm concerned. So. We have to be careful if we're going to call the name of people put on here. I can't allow it because it's not fair to the company, right? Unless we have hard evidence. If I have the hard evidence, as President Jack Dio does, and he comes and say, look, this is the map. This was given to Nadir here and there, and he shows the evidence, fine. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Okay, this person not ready. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good night, Mr. Nadia. Good evening. Now you see why this country is a problem. I'm forced to call you to tell you that they need house to um, exercise again. For what? You spend how much billion dollar creating mm -hmm. this, this list and all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Why we need to do this, but mm -hmm. it's simple low in field for the court. They could um, do verification and update the list. Mm -hmm. You're talking about uh, okay, PNC. Um, people wouldn't get for go on the list. That's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If they have a claim and objection, everybody, if they think their um, supporter are uh, not going to, you go and get your support and bring them out. Exactly. You know what I mean? You, e no e wonder this country here can't move forward. It's a lot exactly. of money wasted doing stupidness. You need new schools. You need. Um, hospital need um, service. Well, you know, just waste some money. That's fair money. Waste and Thank you. People. Great man. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Mr. Massey Williams and the, um, the American Chamber of Commerce meeting mm -hmm. saying that who made the money made the money 
and all this development, you are going to put on the threat. Mm -hmm. Right? But remember, we had 23 years of stagnation. Mm -hmm. So Ian, they're not corresponding, they're not, they're contradicting what they're saying. If it's mm -hmm. 23 years of stagnation, who made money and where is the development he's talking about? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And to me, like politicians, mm -hmm. when you're a politician, like... Like me? You, no, no, no. <laughs> you're you, 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 No, uh, man. When, you, when you're a politician, like, you uh -huh. you just talk things that you don't really believe. Yeah. Some things, right? Yeah. But when, like, you're Tony President, you just talk things that you don't believe any of what you're saying. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I started my, I started my program with reference to a person who I met today who said, um, when... <laughs> When there is elections, the politician shakes your hands. And when the election is finished, they shake your confidence. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good night. Good, good, good evening. Good evening. Um, you know, when you look at reality, I think all these programs we hear in mm -hmm. the same monotonous thing about election, election. Now, we ain't talking nothing but the development of this country and its people. Mm -hmm. And I think one got to realize that the PNC, Mr. Granger, said it openly, that he's going to go and follow the principles of Bonham. Mm -hmm. So all this thing we coming up to, Bonham rigged every single election. Bonham was not an elected president. Mm -hmm. He was a rigged elected president. Mm -hmm. Mr. Granger, I don't even believe the 2015 election, which went to the court, Mm -hmm. It has not come out, and I think that that election would have been invalidated also to the P PNC winning the election. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he will follow any principles, and I get fed up hearing Javier talking the same thing over and over. He should be convinced he's been around long enough. I think the PPP been around long enough to know that the PNC is not the genuine people. But as William said, they believe in forced ignorance. Mm -hmm. And they will use a rigged election despite what? He mm -hmm. won't put in a force who invalidate the 1997 as. Okay, so that's a judgment that was passed in the courts, and no one challenged it. But saying made the judgment was carried and observed. So we gotta be careful how we look at um, making our comments. So that last one, I had to cut him off because I think he was gonna go down the wrong road. Uh, the chairperson of the Elections Commission was a consensual candidate, and um, we have to wait and see what will happen, right? Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Go ahead. I'm trying to get a ring off. The uh, chairman, now that she is um, what about the court? Would she rule that House of House registration must stop or would she wait on the court matter? I think um, from indications are that there is going to be a wait, a wait and see uh, approach. Yes, but then again, whoever um, wait the matter or we want to call it, then it might end up going to the... It might, except that um, House to House registration is not is not one of the principal starting points for an elections within 90, within three months yes, so if she had if she has to rule within the law or make decisions as she say that are uh, within the law then she has to proceed with elections within three months yes, but how could she proceed when there's a, a court matter going on there's a court matter and house to house registration. House to house registration is not a court matter about electoral list. An but electoral if list. If you have a credible list to go to the election, then how would the, um, I don't think a, a chairman would want to go to the election and, and you don't have a, a list, a credible list where both sides um, will agree that well, well, okay. Well, if you see, it's, it's list, it's checks and balances at the polling place, it's the counting, it's the final tabulation, all these things, right? So it's not just about a list, and there are checks and balances throughout. 
And if we have to take that approach, we might as well resign ourselves to the PNC being in power forever. Well, Thank you. Well, it look like they will be in power forever because as far as they're concerned, this could matter. And, yeah. and, and if I was the chief come chairman, I would just sit back and rock and watch the court go on. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Okay, we have about six minutes remaining on the program. Let's take a few, a few quick calls. Hi, good evening. Hi, Mr. Nandio. Good night. Good evening. Um, they say about this house, house the house registration. Mm -hmm. And um, people coming around, and they're not visiting each and every home. Mm -hmm. And they go to homes like three or four times mm -hmm. to take out pictures. Mm -hmm. Telling the people them that they pictures coming out dark and it's not properly and a whole heap of nonsense so hope that place can be clean mm -hmm. thank you very much i think you have the answer um and this is part of the problem so father lawrence said it if we have our social registration we know we'll beat them hands down not by one seat hi good evening hi good evening you're on the air go, go ahead Okay, good. So yes, lines are clear. We have just about, um, sorry, seven minutes remaining, not six, on the program tonight. Another hot program. Um, good evening, you're on the air, hold no bars. I wanna apologize to those persons who've been calling on the cell phone, there are like 15 calls I missed. Go ahead, you're on the air. Yeah, good night. Good evening. Go ahead. Thanks a lot. Let me take a few quick callers. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. You're on the air. Okay. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Hadir. You're on the air. Go ahead. Sir, I hear the, uh, our president was saved. Mm -hmm. What will be if the outcome, what I understand, is mm -hmm. nothing if you want to appeal it with me. We're going back from January to another seven months again. I know that's the frustration of the overwhelming majority of people of this country, you know. This is real nonsense going on here, man. Yeah, this is just people who don't have any respect for mm -hmm. rule he of said, law. He said one thing from since January, he's changing his mouth every single month, every week. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man, if people really get this because of this thing really is going on already. Good man. <laughs> you reflect the views of a lot of people. Hi, good evening, you're on the air. Good evening. What I uh, uh, the persons who came to the house, the house registration, right? Mm -hmm. They came into my area in Kitty. They went on the northern side of the uh, of the street, and they come to the southern side of the street, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when they went to the northern side, it's like to rent five houses, mm -hmm. and may have two persons living in a in a house. Mm -hmm. It's like five persons came, and like they spent a whole hour in one house. Mm -hmm. I don't know what five of them doing in one house, mm -hmm. and then. It, Mm -hmm. so I don't, don't know when, when them, because they're the whole Well, they said they finished a hundred thousand. Huh? They said they finished a hundred thousand registrations. I don't know how many people, I, 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 I observed them, but five of them came, and they come in Saturday, Sunday, and two and five houses on one side of the street, and the other side, they didn't start registration as yet. And they like the, the one side, like two weeks, and this, this Saturday, Sunday, whole day, the year, and there were five of them, and they spent one hour in the house. And thanks, the thanks, the thanks for the observation. Take care. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hello, good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Yes, good evening. You're on the air. I would like to say one thing. Go ahead. With regards to whether the house, the house registration is mm -hmm. legal or illegal, mm -hmm. I have nieces and nephews that never register and they will be 15, 16, mm -hmm. 17, and 18 years old. Uh -huh. 
So if you were saying that the voters list Go ahead. will have people that are the el eligible mm -hmm. vote around this time, 2019 or 2020, it's a lie, because my nieces no, never registered. No, no, go go back go back when you say I'm saying a lie. You, you were saying that with every six, within, within every six months for yeah. the past six years, yeah. they've all been doing registration. Mm -hmm. And there are people that will be eligible in 2020 or 2019, whichever time the government mm -hmm. announces or GCOM announces mm -hmm. the date of election, mm -hmm. they will be registered, they will, they will be on the list to mm -hmm. register. That's a lie because my... Okay, okay, hold, 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 hold a second, hold a second. It's mm -hmm. not a lie. I don't know if for some reason your nieces and nephews were not around when these continuous registration uh, periods began. They're so, so they, they have a responsibility when there's a continuous registration period to go to the centers and get registered. They've had opportunities every six months for the last... Six, seven years. Six, seven years? Yes. So, so yeah, go ahead. So, if you have a continuous registration period, in, right, rather than starting and scrapping our national citizens database of people 14 years and over, once we have a continuous registration period, your nieces and nephews will have an opportunity to go and register, right? So, and that has been available to over... 550,000 persons in this country. And, and this was advertised? Yes. And it's very well advertised, just like they're doing now and so forth. So, must check back the facts, right? Yeah, check back the facts, right? Check back the facts. Ask Jack, you have check the facts. Thank you very much. And you eventually you might have reached to that kind of comment, right? So, let me take two more calls as we wind down to... Hi, good night, Mr. Adir. <laughs> You're on here. This is 10 years. Mr. Bassevillians was talking about a new register has to be created. They ain't got nothing like that in the, in, in the law. Bassel always... He was saying that the same, uh, I think. He said that every 10 years, this register has to be recreated, and that is the purpose of this house, house registration. But I wanted to ask you if you could give some clarity on that, as to how this house, house registration, and uh, this new register would have an effect on the election, or is it related to the elections? Right. Next week, I'll give you an amplification of that. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. You'll be the final caller tonight. I'd just like to know why the house, the house registration is a problem. Mm -hmm. Why is a problem? Because, one, you're going to have a lot of persons' names in excess. President is saying 200,000 names bloated. But then we will have perhaps 400,000 people who will be left off the list. So you're disenfranchising almost 75% of the voting population. That will happen, I know. I'm telling you from experience. That's what they will do, right? Okay, the yes, second I issue... Thank you. Good. Okay. So we have reached to the 11.30 hour, and we are going to have... Uh, Hi, good evening. Sorry, I will try to um, go ahead. You're on the air. Um, um, I don't want, I don't want to forget about the election. The election is like, when are we going to get the election? We know yet. That's in Mr. Granger, our dear president's head. He and only he. Right? But a great night again. Lively exchanges. A lot of misinformation. A lot of persons don't want to hear law and reality. And some of us don't want to listen to each other so we've had again the mixture of everything but we have to say good night for now so on behalf of kevin the directors of mtv and on my own behalf thanks for your participation and you have a good rest of the evening good night <laughs>